Hey guys, today we're going to take a, a piece from your book on page 109, um, halfway down it says disabling the password recovery process. Um, and then they finish that up on page 110. So what they're talking about here is, you know, we've already gone through the password reset thing where, you know, you get into ROM on and you redo the password if, in case you don't know what the enable password is or something like that. But there is a way to disable that so that you can't even do that. Um, basically, it's kind of an all-or-nothing thing. Their only other option is to wipe the entire flashcard and start all over. Now, why would you want to do something like this? Well, sometimes it depends on where you're at or what kind of business you're working for. Give an example. We've had remote offices uh, that were in plazas or mini malls or whatever you want to call those things where you might have six or seven different companies um, all in the same building, and they're all wired to one central like um, wiring closet so basically, you know, each wall, there's one rack for, you know, each um, company. So your equipment is in the same equipment room with everybody else's. So your IT, so you as an IT guy and their IT guy and everybody else um, can all share the same office or the same wiring closet. So your ASA, you know, can't be locked up physically unless you buy a physically locked cabinet or something like that. Typically, your ASA sits on a shelf there on the wall and really anybody from those other companies who has a key to that room can get in there. So to keep people from getting the information in your ASA, um, you know, your IP addresses, things like that, um, what you can do is you can set that your ASA, obviously, to uh, not allow the password recovery process. Now, obviously, there's still a way around that, and that's what I'm going to walk you through today. Um, but what brought this up is somebody did this in class. Um, I don't know if it was just to be funny or because they accidentally did it, um, but they set this up like that so nobody could actually get in. So the way to do this is uh, basically you go into config T and hit setup like I did down here. And then do you want to do the interactive prompts and you hit yes. Um, firewall will routed. Now what that means is uh, it's going to act as a layer 3 device. Um, enable passwords, yes. Allow password recovery. If you type no here, you get that warning. Um, you know, um, entering no will disable password recovery and disable access to the ROM on. So allow password recovery, no. And it's set. So everything else, I can just put stuff in there. Um, just hit numbers. Ah. And good. Now, write this configuration in the flash. Yes. And then you, can, you get the error bottle or the warning. All right, so now if I reload... Um, we're going to save this config. So now I can't um, redo my password prompting. Uh, so if I can't get into the enable mode, I'm kind of stuck. The only thing I can do here is um, hit space. Uh, obviously, it's going to boot now because all that stuff is on the router. So here it is now as it would be sitting on the shelf. You know, it still boots into your configs. Everything still works. But if somebody tries to hit break um, to get into Raman, you know, it's not working. Hi guys, sorry about that. Somebody was pointing at me and I was like, what the heck they're doing? So anyway, I digress. Alright, so here you are. You can't get in, you can't get into the enable password of the router. Um, you forget it or something like that. So you do your normal um, password procedure. You know, you uh, power cycle the router, which I'm doing right now. And then when the router comes back online, you know, you hit escape or break. And when I do, here's your only option. Um, you know, warning, password recovery, Raman has been, you know, access has been denied. Um, so the only option is to erase all system files. And again, this is to protect everything on the ASA, your configuration in the ASDM, uh, the Cisco IOS, which is guarded through the government, all this other weird stuff. Um, all your configs would have all your information about different things, um, your uh, cryptographic keys, things like that. So here again, your only option is to erase the files if you want to get into the ASA. So... Um, type in yes or why and permanently erase the disk yes now what it's doing is it is actually going through that on that flash drive and it is erasing that sucker and then for well it's not formatting it um, but it's actually wiping it so that it is no longer formatted and you can't put data on there um, and we'll talk about that in just a second so I'm gonna pause this here and as soon as this is done I'll restart the video
All right, that's done. And you can see after you erase the disk, then it re-enabled password recovery so that now we can get in there and uh, recover the password. Now, however, again, flashcards totally wiped, so there's nothing on this ASA now. If I do a reload, all it's going to do is boot in an endless cycle because there's nothing on there. And basically, you keep getting this. Um, do I want to hit break or escape to interrupt or space to reboot? Again, hit space. Just again, it reboots. Your only option is to hit escape or break um, to pause it. And then you go into ROM zero, and there you are. So again, ASA, right now it's kind of a boat anchor, no configuration information on it, um, which is nice because this way if somebody steals your ASA, all they're getting is your ASA, not your information. So if you're in an environment where you can't lock it down, this is a good idea to have. Okay, now what we need to do is, um, there's a couple ways to get out of this. You can pull the flashcard off, um, reformat it into um, in a Linux-based system. Um, I like to use Ubuntu um, and use the, the 0x06 format, and we'll get into all that in another video. Uh, and then you can just move your files over, um, the, the ISO file, and then boom, you could be booting and you, everything would be fine. Or what I'm going to do is we're going to set this sucker up, and I'm just going to TFTP it over there. You know, again, a lot of times you don't have access to all this stuff. Basically, you've got your laptop, and you've got some cables, and that's it. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to fire off the TFTP server here uh, from SolarWinds, um, and I'm going to put my ASA file here in the TFTP root directory that SolarWinds is looking for. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a cable from my PC, um, plug it into port 5 of the ASA, and I'm going to go to my IP configuration on my PC, and I'm going to change my IP address to 192.168.1.2, and I'm going to give the ASA 192.168.1.1, and then once that's all set up, I'm just going to transfer files over to the card that way. So the commands for here are kind of unique, uh, and let me show you here. So in Raman, these are the five commands you want to type in. It's going to be address equals, and then the IP address you want to assign to the ASA. Server equals the IP address of your PC or the TFTP server. Um, gateway, now typically if you're connected directly, it's just the same as the, the server IP address. But if there's a router between you and the ASA, um, obviously you want to point the ASA to the router or the gateway. All right, the image file, and again, this has to be the exact name of the ISO image on the TFTP server, and then the port number that you're connected to on the ASA. Now, don't worry about all this other stuff. Let's just concentrate on these five commands. Now, also, depending on what version uh, of the iOS and some other stuff, these probably have to be capitalized when you enter them in. Let me show what I'm talking about. So here in ROM, if I just do address 192.168.1.1, remember, this is the address I want to assign it. Um, you see I get an incorrect command, but if I hit caps lock and do address equals, it works, uh, and it takes it in there. So, again, we're going to put in the other commands, server, and again, this is the IP address of your TFTP server. Uh, then gateway, uh, again, this is just going to be, because I'm directly connected, I'm just going to put in my TFTP server, and then image, the image file, and again, it has to be exact. That's why I have it up here. This one's a little bit older one that we're using in class, uh, but it was the only one I had uh, on this PC. Again, this PC for the videos is my son's, uh, my six-year-old's. It's not mine. That's why if you see all these kid games, they're not mine. All right, so uh, then the port number. Remember, this is the port that you're connected to on the ASA. I'm in port 5, so it's Ethernet 05. Now, once this is done, this is what you should get. Um, the link is up. Now, take caps lock off and just type in TFTP. If you do it in capitals, it won't go. So it's kind of weird. So TFTP, boom. Now it's grabbing that ASA or that ISO image, and it's moving that into RAM. So, yeah, there's a couple different steps here. So once this moves this into RAM, then it'll reboot off the RAM. And it'll have the ISO loaded in RAM. If you then do a reload, you're right back where you started from. So you got to follow these steps. So again, the first thing you want to do, enter those five commands, um, set up the TFTP stuff, and then get your file over there. So now we can boot uh, into the ASA and then start issuing some commands. Now, notice here, I'll go back to that here in just a second. All right, could not initialize system files in Flash. And here, warning. Unable to write um, to Flash unable to read from flash. So right now, after that thing reloads, 
you know, here we are in the basic setup. I can hit enable, and by default, there is no password on the enable. If I do show flash, Notice it doesn't show you anything. It says no files. It also couldn't do anything. It doesn't show you how much open space is available either. Because the flash card has kind of been wiped, there is no formatting information on there either. So the first thing you want to do, well, and it depends on where you want to do this. I always do it here, is I format um, flash colon. Um, do you want to say blah, 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 yeah, confirm, and confirm, and confirm. All right, now when I do show flash, notice now it tells me how much bytes are free. This is why it's very important to get that step in there. If you don't, you'll run out of space. All right, now you've got the flash formatted, but again, there's no file sitting there in flash. So there is no um, ISO, something to, to boot off of, so there's no operating system here on this ASA. So now what we need to do, we need to issue a couple commands to bring the ASA up so that we can um, TFTP into it again. Um, it's kind of weird. Basically, what we did the first part when we put in these commands in Ramon is we kind of put the stuff in there for a one-time TFTP. But if I go in here now and, and do um, like a, a show running, um, you won't see any kind of information. There is no server IP address. There is no IP address assigned to the, any interfaces. So here's the commands that I'm going to enter. Um, I'm going to do enable, then I'm going to go to config T, then I'm going to do interface VLAN 1, then I'm going to name VLAN 1 inside, then I'm going to put an IP address, wow, sure works better if you spell that correctly, <laughs> then I'm going to do no shutdown, I'm only going to type in exit, because then I need to go to interface 05 where I'm plugged in, then I need to do a no shutdown, then I can end, and then I should be okay. Now obviously there's that format flash command, um, I already did that. So let me walk through these commands real quick and I'll show you what I'm doing. So from here, again, I'm already in enable, so I can go to config T. All right, now I'm going to go to interface, VLAN 1. No, actually, let me, I can show you something real quick. All right, if I do show interface, you'll see that VLAN 1, and then there's these two, you know, sets of asterisks, or exclamation, however you want to say these. I can't even say the name. But anyway, there's no word in there. It's not assigned. So VLAN 1 is down. And VLAN 1 is not assigned to the inside interface, and there obviously there's no IP address. So what I'm talking about is, by default, when you start the ASA up, when there's no config information, port 0 is the outside interface, has a security level of 0, and is set up for DHCP. Ports 1 through 7 are set up on the inside interface um, and have a security level of 100. So if I sign a v or an IP address to VLAN 1 and then do no shutdown, that doesn't really do anything. I also have to give it the name inside to bring it to assign that information to ports 1 through 7. So again, wow. <laughs> Sorry, I got a book sitting here and it's in my way. All right, so now that I'm in there, um, I want to do interface, you know, VLAN 1. I want to give it an IP address. So I assign that. Um, now, here's where you do, you know, name if inside, and that assigns VLAN 1 to the inside interface, and the inside interface is ports 1 through 7. All right, again, it always grabs security level 100 by default. You can change that if you'd like. Um, again, 100 is the highest level. So once you do that, make sure you do a no shutdown. Um, bring the interface up. Now just do an exit, don't end. And now go into interface, whatever you're connected to on the, the ASA. I'm connected to port 5, so I'm going to go into Ethernet 05, and I'm going to do a no shutdown on that. Now I can type in, and now when I do a show interface, let me show you the difference. Now VLAN 1 is assigned to the inside interface, which means VLAN 1, whatever's on VLAN 1, now covers ports 1 through 7. So VLAN 1 is assigned to inside, it's up, and it has an IP address. And if I keep going down, you know, 5 is up, line protocol is up, and everything else is administratively down, as you can see. So now I should be good. And again, you always want to test before you do something. So I want to ping 192.168.1.2, and everything's successful. So I should be good. I formatted my flashcard. Um, I can ping everything, so everything's good. So now I can do copy TFTP to flash address a remote host, which would be my PC running the TFTP server, source file name, ASA 
22-K8. Now remember, this name could be different in class because um, we're using 822, uh, or version 822, not 722 like we have here. Or actually, 821, but I digress. All right, there it goes. And then I'm just going to keep that same file name, and boom. Now I'm actually loading that file in the flash. Uh, once this is done, we'll be able to do a show flash, and we should be able to see that file in there as it's writing. So first we're accessing it, then we're moving it. Wait for it. Boom. All right, so now if I do a show flash, there it is. There's the ISO image over there. So now I want to copy uh, my running to start. All right, confirm, yes. And that copied. Now I can reload. And everything should be fine. My ASA should reboot. Hit space to boot. And there it goes. It's loading the iOS image. It's on flash. And there I go. And I'm set. So that's how you get out of that. Again, the, the whole thing, it's a very secure related thing. Um, if your ASA is somewhere where you don't, you can't control physical access to the ASA, you can do this. Um, otherwise, I mean, if you're like most places and you have your own server room, it's locked and only you and your IT guys have the keys um, and they know this information anyway, you do not have to do this. And please don't do this in class. Um, there, there's no need unless you're going to fix it yourself. Um, and so, and you just want to practice. So there you go. If you have any questions, make sure you bring them up in class. Thanks guys.